Hey everyone, it's me Cass. Um, so if you don't already know my name, um, I run the blog, Did You Put Your Name in the Goblet of Fire? How are there already 300 of y'all? I did... Thank you for whatever it is that possessed you to follow me because seeing you guys every day just melts my heart. Um, Y'all are so kind, and I could go on for hours and hours about just you guys. Um, but I do not have the time for that, um, and that's not what you're here for. So, um, I have more questions than I expected to get, honestly. Um, and I'm going to try to keep this down to 20 minutes, but no guarantees, so... Um, I actually wrote a script to try to keep myself from rambling and I'm already straying from it. So away we go. Oh, also, Jen, you made me want to do a pretty edited Q&A video. I hate you. <laughs> the most rewarding thing is honestly seeing people's reactions for example like the remus post i did that talks about like what his favorite part about series is like how everyone reblogged it and the tags just like freaked out about how adorable it was and like i don't mean this to sound egotistical because it's really not it's i thoroughly i'm, I'm so grateful that you guys enjoy this and that i that I can make you feel these things, like, it honestly, if it had been, you know, Jan or whoever posted it, I would read the tags the same way, but, like, the fact that it's me, that warms my heart, and when it's negative 40 degrees outside, I'll take all the heartwarming I can get. Um, I think the most unfortunate thing in the community is, um, how everyone can get caught up in the negativity. It... And I'm not saying that, like, just coming out of, like, the whole dreary thing, but it's like, yeah, that happens, where the, the community will get split between two sides of a fight, and then there's, like, a few people in the middle that are just like, I, what do we do right now when all of our friends are caught in this fight? But also, just getting caught in the non hate that happens. It makes it so difficult to want to keep doing this when you're the one receiving the hate, but also when you see your friends getting hit with it too and like how it affects them and I'm not saying I'm gonna stop because hell no I'm not gonna stop um but seeing how my friends get hit and what things get said it's so hard when you want to defend these people that you've never met in person and live across the country or across the world from you but all you want to do is just cuddle them and wrap them in blanket burritos and, you know, it sucks when it's on and on because you can't even handle that shit privately. Like, you have to deal with it on your blog if you want to deal with it. And I think that sucks. Um, <laughs> Charlie. Uh, so, even though we don't really know much about him before Hogwarts Mystery came out, um... He was always my favorite just because of, like, the things we do get to see of him. Like, when Ron writes him about Norbert, he literally drops everything and travels from presumably Romania to Hogwarts in the middle of the night to come rescue this baby dragon that his baby brother found. And um, he's very passionate about his lizards. Uh, you know, he lives in Romania miles away from his family um probably by choice honestly um looking at how the family runs sometimes but he is so passionate and that he is willing to leave everything he knew behind just to make uh, the world a better place for his dragons like it's amazing and i just i love seeing that side of him oh my favorite book is prisoner of azkaban um, I love Sirius and Lupin and how this book, like, focuses on them. And it's also, you know, the first time we meet them. And I love the dynamic that is 
grow that grows between Harry and Lupin and a little bit between Harry and Sirius at the end. But I also love that Harry is suddenly around people who didn't hate James or Lily's guts. Like he's not around the um, Dursleys or he's not around Snape. He's able to fully actually start to learn about his parents from people who knew them very well. Um, and I wish, honestly, there could have been more heart-to-hearts between him and Lupin. Uh, but, you know, those, those come later and he does learn more about his parents. But it all starts with Prisoner of Azkaban. <sighs> so now we start where people start asking just a couple questions. And I have three questions, four questions from the same person. So here we go. Um, my favorite question, or my favorite characters to RP, uh, Charlie and Sirius. Uh, this was a hard one because Remus is also top on my list, but I think Sirius mostly because he's very similar to myself and a lot of the shit that he had to go through as a child. Um, I went through less extreme versions, but I, you know, grew up in an emotionally abusive household and... Honestly, sometimes there were days I would rather have had bruises just to show that it was happening. Um, and growing up in that and having a character that I can relate to, it, it's, it sucks, but it's nice. Um, and Charlie, uh, for all the reasons I listed above, just like who he is and like just the pure, pure uh, dragon boy. That he's my boy. Um, my favorite headcanon is that Black Cannon was 1000% fake. Um, like, there was a day where Sirius was complaining about how his parents were uh, never going to accept the fact that he was gay or blood traitor, or that he was, you know, dating a werewolf. And he's just like, I wish I had a way to cover this up. And Marlene happened to be there and was like, well, I'm having sort of the same issues. Like, why don't we just pretend to date and go from there and I think that that was how they coped until you know uh, Sirius started dating Remus and Marlene started dating Dorcas um, and honestly I think that was pretty close to when Sirius got kicked out I don't think it was the, the reason for it but I think it happened like him getting kicked out and then him dating Remus happened pretty soon within each other um, and I think up until that point, his parents never picked up on the fact that he was, you know, anything but dating Marlene. And both of them were gay as fuck, and they bonded over that. And I think that that's my favorite headcanon, is you have these two badass characters who have to hide who they are, and they bond over that. And I think it's cute, and I love that dynamic. And I think they had a very flirty relationship, and a lot of people didn't know that they weren't dating. So I already kind of answered my fave and like least favorite things about RPing, but I think something else that I could say about that is I love interacting with people, um, especially the talent that's popping up in the RP community right now. Um, hijacks are hella fun, like RP nights. Um, just being able to work and have fun and interact with people who are all over the world over these characters that we all love. It's amazing and I love it and I want to meet these people in real life. Uh, one day I will have the money to travel. Um, nope, hate, hate, still my f least favorite thing. Um, favorite part of my culture. So I'm American. Um, there's a lot about my culture that is, uh, I just don't like. So I, I had to think about this one for a while. And I think I'd have to say that my favorite thing is that this country was started as a melting pot, and in a lot of ways it still is. There's a lot of immigration. Um, most people, like, no one that lives here is 100% anything. Um, unless you're, you know, straight off the boat from a country. And then you're not technically, like, you're not even 100% American. Like, everyone's 100% American. But what makes those people, like, I'm German, Irish, Lithuanian, uh, Scandinavian, Iberian Peninsula... You know, like, there's, I'm European, but, like, so many different cultures came together to make me. Um, and, like, in Minneapolis, like, where I used to live, 
I could go two blocks and be from, I could go from Latin America to Somalia and then go another couple blocks and be in Vietnam, go another couple blocks and be in Norway. Like, the way that, I mean, it sucks that it's kind of segregated like that, but it, they're so close within each other. And, like, restaurants, communities, like, it, it feels like you're transferring from one culture to another. And that you can do that just by wandering a city. I love that. And I wish that there wasn't so much um, friction between those cultures sometimes, but it is an amazing experience and I love it. Oh man. So Marlene is the top of my list. Um, I have so many things planned for Marlene. Um, and then after that, I don't know, Tony Stark, uh, a lot of Marvel characters, uh, honestly. Um, I want to branch out and do more f fandoms in general, so if you stick around, you're going to start seeing Marvel, Supernatural, Doctor Who, all these fandoms that really got me, like, Harry Potter was the gateway fandom, <laughs> but like, Supernatural is a huge part of my life, and comics are what I do for a career when I'm not, you know, selling pizzas. So you're going to start seeing a lot of those popping up, and I'm really excited to start giving some more characters a chance, um, and I'm really excited to see how you guys are going to take it. So yeah, Harry Potter will always have my heart, and I will always, always, always do Harry Potter characters, but there will be more. Can I cheat and say the mountain's by the beach? No? Okay, okay. Um, so that's a really hard question because I love both areas. Um, but if I had to pick one because I was born in the mountains, I would probably have to go with the mountains. <sighs> that's, that, that's hard. I'm a thespian and I hate you. Um, so I'd either say Rent, Hamilton, or Les Miserables, because I cannot pick one. Um, probably in that order, honestly, though. Um, and character-wise, I'd say Angel from Rent, either Alex or Lafayette from Hamilton, because, I just, again, decisions are hard. Um, and then Eponine from Les Mis. Um, and now that I look at those characters, they're all very broken characters. What does that say about me? <laughs> um, the first thing I would do is pay off student loans, debts, like credit card, the money I owe my mother, etc. Um, I, after that, I would buy a car, probably nothing too expensive, just like a car to get around in in the winter time. When you know it's negative 40 and there's a f six inches of snow and the motorcycle just does not cut it in that. Um, I'd buy a house because as much as I like my roommate, living with roommates in general is hard. Um, and then for my fun thing, I would travel to Australia. Uh, my best mate lives out there and... Um, we, again, never met in person because yay internet friendships, um, but this is a trip that we've been on and off planning for like three years, and I just never seem to actually have the money to go, and I, I, that would be something I would do in a heartbeat, and I would hate every second of the plane ride. So Hari, I hope you know I love you. <laughs> Um, oh my goodness. So, this is the third favorite part of this community. Um, is that once I got over being shy, and like, I, I was able to go to people and ask them to like, be part of things with me, it opened up this world. Like, it's so much fun to collaborate with people, and yeah, like when you're waiting on GIFs, it really sucks. But, when you get them all together and you start seeing a project come together, it is the most amazing feeling. Especially if you were the one that like wrote it and put it together and like are curating this whole process. It's, it's amazing. Um, 
how has my life changed? If you're easily triggered by talk of like gender and uh, dysphoria and whatnot, I would skip the next couple minutes because this is kind of a story. Um, I came out as queer about six months before I started doing RP stuff. Um, I had a really rough six months um, because well, it wasn't just those six months, but like I finally had put a label to the 24 years of things I'd been feeling of not knowing 100% who I was, um, not liking 100% of who I was, hell, not even liking a lot of who I was. It was really hard because um, I'd grown up religious and, you know, being told who I was supposed to be and how I was supposed to act. And even though I'd been living in Minnesota and kind of like branching out on my own um, for a couple of years, it was still like all of the things that I had learned growing up were still a big part of me. And they still are, And I, but I've learned to adjust how I feel about things like religion and um, all that. But um, yeah, so I didn't really know what to do with dysphoria. I, I did drag for a bit in college, um, my first time in college, but I was living in Missouri at the time and the only drag culture there was really drag queens. And while they were very welcoming and I loved that culture and I appreciate everything I got out of that culture, there's a difference from being around drag queens and drag kings. And I am glad I finally found a place that has a drag king culture and I'm going to do something about it. I just haven't figured out when. Um, I really need to get my persona put together. Uh, well. I need. I have the personality put together, or the persona. Per, I have the person put together, but I don't have like a name or a complete look yet. But it's going to happen. Um, so the first time that my dysphoria got really bad after this was, um, I, I just had a bad day at work, and I'd had a couple of panic attacks, and the next day I had off. Thank God, and so I was feeling really dysphoric that day. I just I woke up, didn't like my face, didn't like how I looked. There was nothing I could do. And I just remember I got up and I did a serious ask. I was one of the first long ones I did. Um, and I was dressed up as serious all day. Like literally, I think it was nine hours. Um, I, I know I did a long ask session. I think I did, an, I did a thread or two and um, I just got, like, it forced me out of my own headspace because I had to be serious. <laughs> uh, and I, I couldn't focus on what my problems were because I had to focus on whatever serious was going through that day. And you know what? It worked. Uh, when I took off the makeup, I didn't hate my face anymore. Um, I still was a little dysphoric and I didn't quite like what I saw in the mirror, but I didn't hate what I saw anymore. And I think, and then the next day, I, did, I don't remember what I recorded the next day, but I did another recording session the next day, and by then it was the next day after that I went to work, and my manager asked me how I was doing because he knew I'd had a rough couple days, and I was just like, you know, I'm good. I'm, I'm back at work, and I'm good. I it's going to it's it was rough, but it, I made it work. Um, and having <laughs> so this is gonna make me sound probably a little crazy now, but like having these characters in my head where when I write for them or when I think about them, like it gets me out of my own headspace and I don't focus on the things that make me dysphoric anymore. And I'm, or, you know, it helps with the depression. It helps with a lot of things. And it, I'm so glad that I have a way to cope with all of that now because for, you know, 24 years, I had nothing and it sucked um, and so for that for this community and everything I'm forever grateful and I, I cannot begin to describe the emotions that come with that and my last question um, so I have a couple things honestly and I don't know which would be the actual top just because it kind of comes down to whichever I can be able to afford first. Um, but I want to backpack through Europe. I want to um, camp 
through several of my favorite national parks. Like, I want to go to Glacier. I want to go to Yellowstone. I want to go back to Arches. I want to do all these trips and, like, camp for a couple days and do a bunch of hiking and stuff and just be the nature nerd that I am. Um, and then um, the last one is I want to take my motorcycle. And I don't know if I'm going to do it with this one or if I'm going to do it with, like, a nicer one. Probably a nicer one because it's a long-ass drive. But I want to go out to California and drive up Highway 1. I want to go from San Francisco all the way up to Portland and uh, Seattle. And then I want to, yeah, I want to drive up Highway 1, which is Big Sur, which it goes right over the bay. And it is a beautiful, curvy highway, and I want to do it so bad and I want to go through the Rockies which is probably why I need a bigger motorcycle than I have right now but I it's going to be awesome and I can't wait and it's probably not gonna happen for like 10 years um, but yeah um, thank you all for being in my QA listening to my Q&A for sending questions I think I just hit 20 minutes so yay for time limits and making them um, the, thank you All right, so TJ sent me a crap ton of questions and I recorded my Q&A about halfway through, apparently. So I'm just gonna do a short little video on the last couple questions because they're fun questions and I like answering questions. Um, so in a zombie apocalypse, would you fight and survive to the end or would you be one of the first ones gone? Um. <laughs> If I was honest with myself, um, I'd probably say somewhere in the middle, honestly. Um, I I am a fighter. I'd like to think I'd make it to the end. Um, but I also lack coordination and honestly, like, if things got really tough, I don't know if I would not give up. Um, but if you ask me, I would make it to the end. Um, what is one thing that never fails to bring me comfort. <sighs> Honestly, uh, talking with my best friend. Um, we've relied on each other a lot over the last <laughs> five years of friendship, but um, other than that, a lot of the time I'll just put on like some show I've watched a gazillion times and like a warm blanket and popcorn or something. Um, so like I'll watch MASH or I'll watch Ghost Hunters or something like that. It just makes me laugh and ponder life decisions. Um, name a fictional character that you relate to on a spiritual level. So not serious, Black. <laughs> um, I think a character outside of the Harry Potter universe that I relate to on a spiritual level would be Dirk Pitt. Um, I don't know if anyone really knows who that is anymore. Um, there's an author, his name is Clive Cussler, and he wrote these books where the main character's name is Dirk Pitt. Um, they turned a couple into movies. One was back in the 70s, one uh, was 2007? With Matthew McConaughey, Penelope Cruz, uh, William H. Macy, Steve Zahn. It's a terrible movie. It's funny, it's great. Uh, honestly, but it's a terror. Like, if, if you don't like watching shitty movies, don't do it to yourself. Uh, it's definitely a B-list movie. Um, but it's, it's, um, he's this son of a politician who gets into, he is in the Navy for a long time, and, like, just, like, James Bond, like, playboy level, and then he ends up working for the government as basically a tre treasure hunter getting paid. Um, and that was something, I mean, it's still something I want to do, um, and yeah, it, it, he's an amazing character. He's cocky as shit and I love him. Um, but he's another one of those that like, once you break down his walls, there's a lot to be unpacked and I love his character. If I could ask only one question, any one question and know the total truth to it, what question would you ask? So this comes from me growing up religious, um, but this has been a question that I ask anytime I talk to anyone who's witnessing or like trying to convert or whatever. Um, but I, I'm legitimately curious about this question. Um, but it's, um, 
if Jesus came to die for our sins, and that is what was supposed to happen, um, why do we see Judas Iscariot as a traitor? Because he was the one that, he didn't make it happen, but he made it easy for it to happen. And I don't understand why the person who sped up the process is seen as a traitor and labeled that way, especially when he, and on top of that, he, after Jesus dies, he realizes, Judas realizes the wrong of his ways. So I don't understand what was wrong about it if God had sent his son to die. And that was supposed to happen, regardless. Um, yeah, uh, but I think that leaves me getting a beer with Jesus, in the words of Thomas Rhett. So, probably never going to get the answer to that question. But, you know, maybe one day. That, for real, is the end of this video. TJ, I love you, but that was a lot of questions. <laughs>